Thanks for watching. Go ahead and click the subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified of each new video as it comes out. Hey everybody, I'm JJ Johnson. You're watching Reality Survival and this is going to be part 3.5 of the uh, Minuteman Militia Line Gear video. And we're going to talk just real quick about helmets and um, the importance of hearing protection and how to, um, as well as ballistic head protection, but and how to put on these um, these earmuffs onto your ballistic helmet. It's it's kind of a kind of a goofy process is why I figured I would go ahead and and talk with you about it a little bit. Um, <clears throat> what you have to do is and and I didn't get the most. Let me just say this: I didn't get the most expensive variations that you can. There are you can spend up to a thousand dollars or more on just the earmuffs themselves and I didn't really want to spend that much so I went with the Peltor Tactical 100s and they mount to the 3M Peltor arc left and right side mounts the arc mount and that's what this is an arc rail right here on the side and you, you, you buy the mount separate from the hearing protection okay and so you get the mounts and then what you have to do this is the um, this is what the uh, the old headband was for the the sport tech 100s and so I had to cut through here to be able to get the line out that goes from because it's it's the electronic protection right so I had to cut that out to get that line out and then you have to take off the the little ends you know that, that, were, that attached it to it and went on the end here and so you get that all pulled apart and then you can go you can basically take it and you can put it on the rails now my recommendation is to go ahead and put the rails on the arc rail first or put the the mounts on the arc rail first and then go ahead and take um, the little plastic pieces that came on the tactical 100s and mount it onto that wire um, because the ones that came with it were a little bit big for the TAC 100s so you just have to swap that out it's no big deal um, this also, these also have the capability to do a um, audio input. So, if you want to listen to your headphones while you're on the range or whatever the case may be, you can do that. Or if you want to have it so that you can take, um, <coughs> you know, this and plug it into a lead from your radio so that you can hear communications, you can do that. And it works uh, works just fine on this one for these little BTEC radios. You just have to have a lead uh, basically routed through your uh, plate carrier, you know, or whatever the case may be, so you can plug it in from your radio um, up to this little lead here. And this gives you plenty enough room uh, so that if you have one, you know, hanging off of the back of your, your plate carrier, you should be fine. And I just took some Gorilla Tape and taped it into place. I'm sure there's a better way to do it. I don't know what it is. <laughs> um, but in, in the meantime, when it's you know not being used, then that is why I just have that little tape right there just to hold it up and out of the way um, until it's needed. Um, this helmet I got from uh, Highcom Security and it's a good helmet. It's very, it's very lightweight. It's a ballistic. I think it's a level 3A protection. Um, and I need to, I need to get the NVG mount for it. That's something that I haven't done yet. But do you really need the earplugs on here? So my opinion is, is that, and and that's why I spent the money to do it on mine, is that it really makes sense. To do that, if you, you can use just regular earplugs, okay, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, they even have electronic earplugs that you could use in, and if you have that, 
and you plan on using that, I think that's fine. Um, something like this is going to give you a little better advantage because you can hear your radio if you're if you're working with people or let's say you're in a, a you know grid down situation or something along those lines. You can always have your radio on so that you can hear if there's any problems at your home. You know, let's say you're working at a checkpoint or a roadblock in your neighborhood and your wife needs to get a hold of you in an emergency or something. Um, you, she would be able to call and, and let you know there's a problem at the house, you know, or something like that. Um, also, with the electronic hearing protection, you can hear what's going on around you. When your, your buddies are, you know, calling that they're moving or they're reloading or whatever the case may be, you'll have some situational awareness of what's going on around you. So part of the problem with the old traditional uh, style hearing protection is, is that, you know, especially if you're double layering it and stuff like that, when, when you have a lot of shots going on around you and you're also trying to communicate with other people, it can be difficult to hear. These are a force multiplier, in my opinion, that allow you to be able to maintain situational awareness and protect your hearing. And if it's so dangerous out that you're having to wear your level, you know, three or level four plate carrier and your ballistic helmet, you should expect that there could be trouble. And so having a good set of ear protection on your helmet, I think, makes sense. Um, like I said, it's a, it's a little bit of a pain putting these things on, but once they're on there, it's it's you know it's it's pretty good and it's actually uh, a lot more comfortable, I think, especially than trying to run you know this strap up underneath the the helmet and all this kind of stuff. That that's just a no go to me. So I think it makes sense to do something like this now. Do you necessarily need a, um, a ballistic helmet? I think that's the preferred option. However, uh, I think it totally makes sense to go with a bump helmet if you can't afford to get a ballistic one. Um, you know, just a, a bump helmet like an airsoft kind of helmet or whatever with some good soft, uh, you know, um, padding on the inside and a good strap can, can definitely help. Um, with you know concussions like getting your head knocked around and you know different things like that and protecting your cranium um, it's not going to help from bullets necessarily um, and and these won't necessarily stop rifle rounds from the right angle I mean from from most angles they will you know graze off of them but if you get a good straight on angle it's going to go right through it um, but in vehicle ops, you know, when you're moving and stuff like that, if you get in a car crash or something, having that helmet on there is going to be uh, helpful. And um, so, you know, even if your bump helmet is just to hold a good set of electronic curing protection, to me that makes sense as well. Uh, then again, you know, you've got the capability to hear through your radios and stuff like that too. So, you know, that, that this is all just my opinion. I, I'm not trying to suggest that people need to go out and become commandos or rambos and all that kind of stuff. But if you're going to plan on defending yourself, your community, your uh, neighborhood, then you need the right tools to do it. And I think these are all just tools from the toolbox that are going to help make it more survivable for you. So... Anyhow, guys, uh, as always, I definitely appreciate it when you click the thumbs up button, when you share it with your friends on Facebook and Twitter, and don't forget to live the six Ps. Proper prior preparation prevents poor performance. Stay safe, guys.